This is Chad Montgomery and Luke Miller and Lakin Johnson. We have the supercritical and ultra supercritical steam power plants pre uh, presentation and a supercritical supercritical power plant is a power plant is that is high efficiency and low emissions and they do this by having the working fluid at the supercritical point a supercritical fluid has no distinction between a liquid or a or steam and there is an instant phase change between liquid and there's no there's no mixture between the uh, gas and steam it is straight change from liquid to steam and this is done by increasing the pressure of the working fluid to the point where the latent heat of vaporization decreases all the way to the point of zero. And this can be shown on a TS diagram and a phase change phase diagram of the working fluid. And here's the, the diagrams for water. The, um, here's a typical schematic for a super critical power plant. This is a power plant that is a 600 megawatt generation, and most power plants have all the bells and whistles. They most boilers go past the performance of these supercritical points. So we have a wide range of pressure. So there's all three pressure turbines right here. We have the high pressure turbine, intermediate, and the low pressure turbine. And here's the the values that you can see from each component. The temperatures at about 500 to 600 degrees Fahrenheit, and ultra supercritical is just one that is higher, maybe up to 700 degrees Fahrenheit. And here's a company that makes the boilers. Well, actually, I just skipped this slide. Here we go. So the boilers, um, most of them had early developments. However, they were prolonged by the light water reactor, and most of the advantages that you get with a supercritical boiler is the it's drumless so it's no longer it's one it's in and out it does not have to go through a system of heat exchangers to um to go from to go from its um, mixture change from liquid to gas however as a higher re rate transfer rate and there's no bubbles or any suit from salt water because all of that is sealed and that there's uniform heating with no corrosion or erosion some of the disadvantages of you got to treat the water. However, the the boiler sometimes outperforms the rest of the power plant. And here's a here's a company that makes supercritical boilers. And most they're from they're based in Japan. They have two boilers, the two pass boiler and the tower boiler. They have a couple plants that they're responsible for in Japan and Germany. But the reason we have these um, we have presented this company is because they have made boilers in the past 100 years and you can see the the illustration of the performance of super, their supercritical boilers and it kind of started here in 1970 you can see that we've crossed the the critical point and and we've got to the point where we've got to ultra supercritical points in 2000 and although the uh, the pump seem like the most important part but even though the boilers seem the most important, but the pumps are actually the driving force as they increase the pressure to the point where the latent heat is zero, as I said. And the sealing, so some of the design constraints is the um, sealing and lubrication and compressibility and fatigue, and all this is due to high pressure. And most of the solvent to these pumps is carbon dioxide. When evaluating the economics of a power plant, many factors need to be accounted for. Looking at the table, we can see the average efficiencies, CO2 emissions in grams per kilowatt hour, power generation costs in US cents per kilowatt, and total plant capital cost in US dollars per kilowatt. Since fuel is the largest expense to keep a plant operating, understand the efficiency of the plant being built and the fuel cost trend significantly impacts the economics of the plant. With a global push to be more aware of CO2 emissions, many governments and multilateral agencies have intervened with the current with the current approach as they're pursuing the most cost effect, effect, effective power production. Some of these measures include tax credits or penalties for varying levels of emissions. When looking to build a new plant, this is another significant factor to be considered. Power production is a business. Designing a power plant that is not economical will be overlooked by developers. The table shows that supercritical power plants have the most effective power generation costs. Having a lower 
lower cost per kilowatt. Although ultra supercritical power plants have a larger power generation cost as compared to subcritical plants, with material and technological advan advances, this gap has, has been trending downward and will ultimately surpass the lower threshold of the subcritical power generation cost. Total plant capital cost for subcritical and ultra sub supercritical plants follows the same trends as in the power generation cost. Supercritical plants have a large range, however, from 950 to 1350 US dollars per kilowatt. With manufacturing and metallurgic advancements, the upper end of this range will trend downward. This uh, graph helps illustrate the efficiencies. As you see from the subcritical and uh, you see a ramp up in the ultra supercritical, you can see the global average being of 34%, and you can hit the upper threshold of 47.5% with ultra supercritical plants. And then this uh, graph helps illustrate the environmental impact. As you move from subcritical to ultra supercritical, the efficiency just imp impacts the grams for CO2 per kilowatt hour. Okay, so I'll be presenting uh, some of the uh, important supercritical and ultra-supercritical critical power plants. So the first one is Unit 6 at Philo Power Plant. It was the first supercritical um, unit to come online making um, grid-scale power at 120 megawatts, and it came on in 1957 in Ohio. And it was made by Babcock and Wilcox and powered a GE turbine. And it was later decommissioned at 1975 um, due to differing power needs during the recession. Another important supercritical plant is Cumberland Fossil here in Tennessee. It was uh, brought online in 1972, and it is important because it was the first of the 1300 megawatt units made by, also made by Babcock and Wilcox. And it was um, the most efficient at the time. And it has two units to make a total of 2600 megawatts. And it is still operating and is set to be decommissioned 2027 due to um, concerns of the pollutants the coal power is putting out. And due to that, the US has not built any power plants since 2013. So to look at some of the most advanced uh, supercritical, supercritical power plants have to go overseas. And uh, so that let me do the looking into uh, China's newest one at Pingshan phase two, where it's reached an incredible uh, efficiency of 49.37%, making 1,350 megawatts. And it was began operating in April of 2022, making it one of the most state-of-the-art uh, coal power plants ever built. And here are some of our references.